So in college, I had jobs, as one does. And one of the jobs that I kept for most of my college career was that I worked for three jewelers. They were in the main part of town. They weren't in the gown part of town. They didn't really like the university kids all that much, and they tolerated me. And they were great guys. They, they, I check in on them now and then. And um, they taught me a lot. I had wanted to get a job with a jeweler because I was a silversmith in, in high school. I worked, made jewelry. I uh, learned how to solder in high school. I learned how to set um, cabochons, which are sometimes very um, dense stones. They're, they're heavier and they're harder to destroy, but also you can have the star cabochons, which are much more expensive. They're usually star rubies or star, star sapphires. Um, I didn't set those. I set more just the polished stone kinds of things in bezel settings and it was it was a lot of fun i really enjoyed it and i found it a um, great experience to be able to make my own jewelry and my own jewelry designs um, i felt very lucky to have that opportunity and when i got to college i thought well maybe i can continue this but i didn't have access to a torch or metal or soldering equipment I still don't, I'm just saying in case anybody ever wants to get me an oxygen acetylene torch, I'd totally take you up on that, that would be great. Um, don't, don't do that, <laughs> don't, my husband would not thank you. So in the Jewel in Her Lavendary, there is a liquid that's used and it's called, it's called the Water of Kings or Aqua Regia. And I picked that in part because I knew what it was and it does some really amazing stuff. It separates minerals from metals and other valuable items. And it's done so for a long, long time. Uh, the reason why it's called Water of Kings is because it, 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 has, it is that old. One of the things that they taught me about gemstones was that emeralds are some of the most touchy of stones, to say the least. That's putting it kindly. They crack, they don't like sudden vertical horizontal movements, for instance, and I'll get to why I'm telling you that in a second. They don't like sudden changes of any sort and they will crack and break. The risk is very high, which is part of the reason why they are so expensive. So in the beginning of any sort of year or season, you know, in the spring and stuff, you're working on smaller pieces, very pretty pieces. But as you get closer to the holidays, most of the work that you do is on larger pieces that people are going to be giving as gifts. So they want their rings sized perfectly for whoever they're giving it to. They want um, bracelets repaired or if they've bought something that, that needed a little bit of a change or a different stone, they're getting that done. And as you get closer and closer to the holidays, the stones tend to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And there was one time, this is how I got my nickname for these guys in, in college, was um, I was polishing an emerald ring. And it was a very big emerald. And I was working really hard not to injure the emerald or, or get it wrecked in any way. And the machine, the wheel grabbed it. I couldn't hold on to it and my nickname basically is the sonic equivalent of what a 30 carat, 30 carat, 3 carat, I don't know, it's, my nickname is the sonic equivalent of what a very large, very expensive emerald, the sound that it makes when it flies off the polishing wheel, hits the ceiling and then the floor. It's not a good sound. There was a large gasp and a huge cloud of quiet afterwards and then we realized that the ring hadn't broken and everything was fine and that's when everybody laughed and then I got the terrible nickname that I didn't live down for a long time.